if today you said hey because you know there is a shortage and there's a world a- a pandemic we are going to say no more intellectual property rights it sends a very bad message because people will stop making new vaccines could you please just briefly introduce yourself first my name is aditya berlia please call me addy uh, i have um, almost on 15 plus years experience in the pharmaceutical sector mm. i have built um, uh, uh, and designed manufacturing facilities uh, uh, in india and across the world have audited uh, and and looked at the entire uh, industry from you know, every single aspect and of course done a fair bit of work uh, both in filing for patents and also then seeing how we can use the existing ip that exists in the world to create new products as we know that recently us president um, joe biden last week just backed a call from india and south africa to waive patent protection for the covid-19 vaccines and i wonder what your take is on this and do you personally approve of this and i think the short answer it's not a great idea okay uh, uh the long answer requires to understand a little bit of what's happening around the world mm-hmm. and why do and why do people think this is a great idea in the first place right uh, the vaccines that we have uh, today were just invented last year yeah. these are not vaccines which we've had for you know 5 10 20 years where Where mm. people understand how they are made, how they are used. Now, yeah. the problem what you have with this is that because uh, um, a lot of the patents that have been filed, mm. right? You, what is a patent? A patent is, you know, it's like a cooking recipe you found online, uh, and not a very good one, right? It's like, oh, make this, put a little bit of this, this go. It's like it's like reading the ingredient list uh, yeah. on a food. and saying based off on that i'm going to recreate the entire food mm-hmm. uh, that's not how it works uh, the way you normally do it is that you have years and years of study reverse engineering to figure out how someone else did it mm-hmm. and as you get more familiar with the platform as you get familiar with the technology you are able to transfer this in the case of uh, covid-19 and these vaccines uh, the mrna stuff just came out last year mm-hmm. there are large number of patents on them but uh, you know everybody who understands and is working on mra has already been hired mm-hmm. right every manufacturing facility capable of making most vaccine has already been licensed um only with the patent waiver is not is far far than enough to like um address the shortage of um covid-19 vaccines globally because like we need to we need all those like technologies to pr- produce the vaccines and also in uh, many countries they have very strict export control of the um, ingredients so the big points are even if you have the patent so what it right. requires what is called tacit knowledge mm-hmm. knowledge of how to make it i think that's why just waiving the patents is uh, doesn't really make any sense because by the time uh, a third party company studies the patents they they try a couple of experiments we do the recipe it's a bit too late even though you might have the ability or the technology to make this to do it at scale you need to get a lot of the supply chain bits and pieces in place and that requires a global coordination uh, you know it's not possible to just do it in a single country uh, uh, alone and that's another barrier which you have to overcome Right. And that just means it takes more and more time. Right now, in the short term, like the Biden's government's decision is kind of more like a symbolic action than having um, some substantive um, meaning. So it's not going to address directly address the global shortage of um, vaccines. I think it's dangerous. If today you said, "Hey, because you know there is a shortage and there's a world a- a pandemic, we are going to say no more intellectual property rights," it sends a very bad message because. people will stop making new vaccines because they say you know what there's no point mm-hmm. and the worst part is a whole bunch of companies working on covid cures covid drugs they'll also say hey there's no point investing because the moment we make this drug you know they'll waive our intellectual property so let's stop investing so i think it sends a very bad signal uh, to all the innovative players around the world could you please like tell us about how the virus surge in india has like affected um, the domestic um, vaccine production or exports in india and how is the vaccination program how is the vaccination rates for example in india and are people willing to take a vaccine so the good news is at least in terms of the of the pandemic uh, affecting the two three major uh, vaccine manufacturers in india it hasn't mm-hmm. i think what is troubling everybody and this is where india is struggling right now that the scale up that was expected 
Um, that hasn't happened the way it should. Now that is changing. Uh, the great news is that apart from our two major um, uh, domestic manufacturers, you have the Sputnik uh, 5, which is coming into India, which has been licensed to five more uh, manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And I think we are on track to, to do about a, you know, 100 million, 200 million doses within the country. 1.4 billion, 1.3 billion people. So that's still not enough. I do think maybe a couple of months ago, there was still a little bit of, of uh, vaccine hesitancy in India. But I think with the deep impact that COVID is happening in the second wave now, I think most people have seen how effective these vaccines are in preventing death. And that's why we have such now a large waiting line for vaccines uh, compared to our supply. And But my hope is I think within three months, uh, we should be able to at least get the most people at risk vaccinated. China has like provided India with the most oxygen con concentrators and as well as other medical uh, equipment to India. Uh, and how would you like comment on this? Tom, you know, one of the things which I deeply admire about China is its sheer manufacturing capacity, right? 30 days ago, 45 days ago, when I think a lot of us started to understand uh, the degree of the surge that is going to come, I think all of us, you know, turned all across the world for aid. But I think China is seen as not just a partner who is helping us uh, through aid uh, uh, donations, but it's also seen as a partner uh, whose, whose manufacturing capabilities will allow us to get. You know, a couple of days ago, I was on the phone with a couple of sources from China. You know, I'm very grateful that we were able to access that level of, of manufacturing capacity. Uh, and, and the ability of both the Chinese and the Indian government to try to get this aid as soon as possible to India. The whole mankind, we, we are a community with a shared future. And only through joint efforts like um, with, by all uh, sectors all around the world can we, find, can we one day eventually achieve the fair and equitable distribution of vaccines around the world.